Hi, Mr. Soda. Thank you and welcome to the Mental Health Film Festival Singapore. And uh, really, really enjoyed two of your documentaries. I'm Alex. I'm the Programs Manager for the festival. And uh, I'd like to know more about you first before we talk about your films. Well, <laughs> I'm a filmmaker and um, I always make films in the same style and method, which is, you know, we I don't do any research before shooting. I just jump into the situation, roll the camera and see what happens. And uh, two films you 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 showed, uh, Mental and uh, uh, Zero, they were shot and edited at the, uh, uh, um, in in the same manners. You know, um, I I call my films observational film series, and uh, you know, uh, and. Uh, I I use I, I use the word observation as a key to my productions because looking and listening carefully is uh, what's really most important uh, for my process. So I try to limit my preconception. Um, in order to do that, I don't do any research. I don't do any meetings and just jump into the situation, roll the camera, see what happens. And uh, in the editing too, I don't do... You know, I don't set up a theme or goal before editing, you know, um, and uh, I try to find out the theme by looking at the footage, look and listen carefully. So that's how we make our films. All right. Thank you, Mr. Soda. So uh, I think let's let's talk about uh, Dr. Matsumoto and mm -hmm. uh, how do you get to know him as a person? How do you get to find him? Yeah. Well, um, it was 2004 or five, you know, um, I was, uh, I, 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 you know, uh, my, 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 uh, producer and wife, Kyoko Kashiwagi, her mother is a social worker and, uh, she, she worked with Dr. Yamamoto and, uh, she often talked about, him and his his patients and uh i got interested in you know um making a documentary on his clinic and and his patients and that's 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 the way we began the process um i contacted them i explained myself uh, what kind of films i make and uh, uh dr yamamoto clinic kora okayama they have a parent uh patients association patients uh uh how do you say yeah association and they discussed whether they want to accept me uh and camera um in the clinic and they decided um they want to accept us uh but we have to get permission from each pa each patient and uh, that's what we did. So we we went to the clinic every day with a camera and uh, and uh, introduce ourselves to each patient. And uh, uh, when we get the permission, we roll the camera and uh, we we got the film. All right. Yeah, I think watching your film was really was really emotional and and it was really raw as well. Like uh, your whole approach to documentary, it's really capturing things on the fly. And mm -hmm. on just observing them, and I think we really, really do, uh, see a lot of, yeah, things that we will not be, we you will not see in a normal documentary. So, mm -hmm. uh, it's really real and it's really emotional. So, uh, how do you get the different documentary subjects to, that you follow to open up to you? Like, are, are you always shooting them all the time? Um. Yeah. Basically, as soon as I get the permission, you know, I start roll the camera. Um, and so, uh, you know, on on that moment, you know, I don't really know about that person actually. <laughs> and, okay. uh, I don't even know if if he or she is a patient or not, um, because you know, especially in Kora Okayama, the staffs don't really wear different clothes, you know, <laughs> yeah. or even Doctor Yamamoto, he doesn't wear white clothes, you know, to 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 say he's a doctor. So, you know, we don't really know who is a patient, who is a volunteer, who is a staff. And, um, but, you know, 
as soon as get the permit as, as soon as I get the permission I roll the camera and um, but actually you know 80 or 90 percent of people I ask for permission they didn't want to be shot uh, they declined uh, because you know to have mental illness is still a big stigma you know in Japan and uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people hide the fact that, that they have the illness itself, and and also they don't tell their their family members that they have illness, and uh, so, um, which is very tough for them because you know, imagine you have you you broke your leg and you you cannot tell people that you have broken leg and that you have to pretend that uh, you know you can just walk you know the same thing you know um they have illness but they, they cannot tell people they they cannot tell your their colleagues or family or friends so yeah so eight or nine person out of ten we ask for permission they declined but you know uh one or two people you know said yes so we wrote the camera yeah, I think those those profiles that you've captured on camera, I think they're really, really, yeah, really strong, really re resilient, and yeah, they really show a lot of humanity. Watching them, yeah, showing them, uh, going through a lot of the silent struggles that we don't really, really see. And so I'm just curious. So, uh, how long was the documentary process? Was it months? Uh, the shooting, following them, do, do your relationships with them develop as well? And does that affect uh... how you how you shoot them? right um in terms of mental yeah it uh we shot in 2005 and then 2007 and uh, i think uh as a whole we rolled the camera about like 30 days in total and uh, for zero it was very actually quick um after we shot mental and we we uh, released it uh worldwide um dr yamamoto and us we became very close to each other's and uh, uh so we so in for 10 years we had you know great relationship and um when we started making seishin zero uh Z zero you know we um uh, we we knew who the Yamamoto, Dr. Yamamoto is, and uh, yeah, he also was very comfortable with us, and uh, um, we ended up shooting only like seven days <laughs> for, wow, for zero. Yeah, it was okay. very very quick actually. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm surprised because I thought with how you shoot your previous documentaries, I thought this was going to be a long process, but I'm surprised <laughs> yeah. it's just one week. Yeah, yeah, actually, I was also surprised. Um, I wasn't. I was planning to shoot like a few years actually. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, and that's what I was kind of thinking about. But then when I started shooting, uh I remember there was a journalist who wanted to interview me in day 5 of shooting. Okay. And uh I I I told him it's too early to interview me because I have no idea what I'm shooting. <laughs> you know? yeah. But he insisted that he wanted to ask me questions. So we met and over over dinner, I was talking about what I shot already in five days. And by telling him what I shot, I realized, ah, probably I have enough. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> So we and we shot two more days, but that's all. And uh, so uh, it was surprising for me, and it was surprising for Dr. Yamamoto uh, because he was expecting the same, you know, kind of, right. you know, heavy, heavy shootings. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, nice. So uh, I'm just wondering how may I know how's Dr. Yamamoto and his wife now? Like, do you still keep up, keep in contact yeah. with them? Yes, how are yes. they now? Yeah uh they they are doing well um yoshiko san um is on the wheel i mean he she uses wheelchairs now 
but uh, she stayed at home um, and uh, Dr. Yamamoto takes care of her at home and uh, uh, they are older than uh, yeah, two, we years ago. Yeah. <laughs> two years ago, but uh, they, are, they are well. And uh, actually Dr. Yamamoto continues to see his pa patients uh, three days a week. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. But he doesn't charge. Uh, he <laughs> he's retired as a doctor, you know. Yeah. But uh, he, I think, you know, he cannot, you know, he cannot just abandon. He's still patient. going strong. Okay. Yeah. So he um he takes like only three patients a day, um, one hour each. Wow. <laughs> Okay, that's so three hours. Yeah, <laughs> but he doesn't charge. Um, okay. and uh, so he is still continuing that. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, amazing yeah, work that he pretty does. Pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, pretty amazing. Yeah. And I'm just curious from from the profiles or the subjects from mentor. Do they still meet up with Doctor Yamamoto? Hmm? What's that? Uh, do the subjects from mental do they still mm -hmm. meet up with Yamamoto? Do do or do you still be in, are in contact with them? I think so. Um, I mean, you know, um, sometimes you know we see each other, you know, on the on at the events or or um, or gatherings, and uh, and uh, yeah, many of the patients uh, who appear in mental or or um, zero, they they still see Doctor Yamamoto, and. Um, um, and uh yeah um although some of them you know passed away um yeah. um they still most of them they keep their relationship yeah okay yeah i think yeah that's really important yeah keeping a relationship is really really important for all like all of us and yeah i think um just going back to zero um so when you shot Zero, was it during pre-COVID? Do you know that COVID was happening already while we were shooting it? No, or no, it was, it was way before. Way before it was two thousand eighteen. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you shot it two years. Okay, two years before COVID. Okay. Right. And right. you spent the two years editing it. Oh, what was, uh, what was the process like? About, yes, it, it was about uh, maybe I spent like a year or so, and uh, it takes a lot of time to get get the film out out there out out to the world yeah. you know <laughs> you know it's even more more work than making yeah. films you know <laughs> so right right yeah distributing yeah, it it's yeah. important yeah <laughs> so it's, yeah it's really um yeah by the way you know says you know zero will be released in france like ne next next month you oh, know okay. <laughs> so All it's right. uh, so it takes a lot of time yeah, it takes <laughs> you know, before before audience sees it, you know. So yeah, it's um, yeah, but uh, I think I I finished it in early two thousand. No, yeah, I think I finished it in two thousand nineteen and I premiered it in two thousand twenty. Okay. Yeah. So I think talking about time and duration and yeah, pre COVID, post COVID, uh. Do you find uh any changes in the I guess the mental health uh healthcare in Japan? Mm. Is the scene in Japan? Do you do you know anything about that? How how things are different from maybe from mental and then zero mm. the perspective mm. on mental health? Right. Um when we shot mental, uh, mental illness was a big taboo and it still is, but it's less, I think. And um uh, um it became more normal to talk about it yeah and um so that stigma is less i think you know these days and which is good i think you know it's a good change also when we shot mental uh people were really surprised because we didn't hide their faces or 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 voice yeah. because it's a norm you know it's really before mental it was a really common wow. for all the documentaries or tv shows or whatever they they hide their faces with with the 
blurry yeah. effect. And um, but I I refused to use that. You know, I I uh, I it was my plan not to use it. And uh, and uh, I told everybody, you know, that when we shot Mento, that we were not going to make you know your face blurry. And that they so whoever agreed to 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 do that, you know, um, appeared in Mento because you know I didn't want to. Um, to put blurry effects is like, you know, it's hard to portray them as a human because, yeah. you know. <laughs> and I think that, uh, yeah, by showing them as they are, it really right. connects us even more. Like everyone's yeah. going through different things, but uh, yeah, it's just yeah, someone yeah. has a different condition. But yeah, we are, it really has the power of empathy, watching someone really up close on screen. And I, I really, right. really felt that watching it. Yeah. Right, right. And uh, putting the blurry effects actually makes it makes it invisible, you know. Yeah, you make them more invisible. Yeah. Yeah, and it makes it more taboo. You know, you, you can't is, even. Yeah. You are not allowed to see their faces. You know, it's 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 um, I it's a effect that you know I I didn't. It was a opposite effect that you know. Yeah. Of something I was kind of hoping for. Yeah, and I so, thought. Yeah, it was really yeah. brave. That you did that, mm. yeah, and for yeah. the mental health patients also as well. They, yeah, they're the brave people, enough the to. Patients, yes, yeah, so he was a, he, he was a really brave. I mean, my patients were re really brave, and also Doctor Yamamoto was really brave to allow it, yeah, happen, and um, it, it took us a lot of uh, courage too, actually, because you know, uh, I could harm them, you know, if yeah. you know, if I abused the. Uh, the I mean I could I could I could make mistakes by you know yeah, editing stuff something yeah so it's it was really um um it, it it I needed to have some courage to do that but you know I, I'm glad I did because um after Mento I think you know a lot of uh, documentaries in Japan stopped using blurry effects um. Dr. Yamamoto told me that you know it's he, he sees much much less these days. Right. So I think that's something that changed you know over time. Mm. And I think I want to go back to about uh, your approach to documentary filmmaking again. I was watching your lecture on in the University of Pittsburgh last ah. night, and yeah, I was watching yeah you talking about the in depth of your ten commandments of uh, documentary filmmaking, and you said objective cinema is still subjective. So I think my question to you is, why do you approach filming, filming documentaries in this way? And what do you hope to achieve and convey to the audience in this way? Right. Um, yeah, Ten Commandments, you know, like, uh, these are the rules, you know, I, I follow. Um, maybe I, should I just read it? Because it's... Uh... You could do a quick one, yeah. <laughs> because uh, we do have a booklet. We do have a, yeah, a oh, details okay. about it. So okay. I think the audience, they can... Yeah, oh, look okay. at the booklet. Yeah. Okay. But let, let me yeah. let me say quickly. Number one, no research. I don't do any research before shooting. Number two, no meetings with subjects. Number three, no scripts. I don't write anything before a shooting. Number four, roll the camera yourself. Number five, shoot for as long as possible. Number six, cover small areas deeply. Number seven, do not set up a theme or goal before editing. Number eight, no narration, superimposed titles, or music. Number nine, use long takes. Number 10, pay for the production yourself. So these are the 10 commandments I, I follow. And uh, I, I, I follow for, for every film I make. You know, I, I have like 10 films now, and uh, they were all produced in the, in the same same. Uh, same manner following these Ten Commandments. The reason I I have these rules is that, you know, again, I want to look and listen carefully and uh, learn something out of reality. And um, be before I started my, started making my own films, I used to, I used to uh, make a lot of TV shows. And for TV shows, you know, we do a lot of research before shooting. 
we make we write scripts, the very detailed one, which has uh beginning, middle, and end. And you even write narrations before <laughs> before shooting. <laughs> and uh so it it becomes really like you you have you have a lot of preconception and you you shoot whatever that fits to your ideas. So you fail to look and listen carefully. And right. I didn't really like that. Mm. And then also on TV, you know, you, you use a lot of narration and you put like sad music on the sad scenes. And uh, it's okay. <laughs> so, you know, audience cannot look and listen carefully either. So I wanted to break that. And I wanted to have a fresh look at the reality. I also want the audience to look and listen carefully what's on the screen. So in order to do that, you know, I need to kind of do the opposite of TV, TV documentary filmmaking. So these 10 commandments are the opposite of TV making. And uh, so, yeah, that's the reason uh, I use I use these commandments. So you've been making films also for over 10 years as well? More than 10 years? Mm, more than 10 yeah. years, yes. Do you feel like uh, those rules are limiting to you? Do you feel like you might want to change it? Uh, you have been, you feel uh, like changing any of the rules or has it been a help or is it kind of limiting you? Yeah. It's the opposite. It, it kind of uh, free free myself. <laughs> It, awesome. me free, it gives it, it gives me freedom okay. because this these rules are kind of like designed to set me free you know emerging emerging you know you don't have to think about the film structure or message or theme before you shoot you just roll the camera when you feel interested <laughs> and see what happens right you're just following your instinct you're just following your interest and you are just going with the flow so it's really free <laughs> and uh so and uh um it's like um it's like uh taking a walk yeah you know if you have a destination you are just your your purpose is to reach the destination and whatever you see in the middle doesn't really care you, you don't it doesn't really matter right yeah but i don't have a destination i'm just walking around and uh whatever i see fascinating um i shoot and it it gets into the film so it's hard to to fail. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> you know? I understand. Yeah. <laughs> and if I... you yeah, if you have a if you have a goal, you could fail to reach the goal, right? Yeah. But if you don't have a goal, you cannot fail. Yeah, this is a whole different way of looking at cinema. You know, like <laughs> with production and like you know the yeah. industry as well. So like yeah, exactly. You're one of the like... outliers that that does that, and with like uh, I guess your inspiration, like Frederick Weissman as well, like just right, and and the other filmmakers as well. So like, I really really like this kind of cinema, like where you just observe and life mm -hmm. just kind of presents itself, and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you, you capture things that you wouldn't normally capture if you have something already planned. Yeah, and right. I thought it was really great in Mental and Zero, like. Yeah, just following Dr. Yamamoto and really f seeing their relationship and their love for each other. I think it was really, really strong. Just through the power of observation. I felt I felt it. I felt you said so much with so little. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good. All right. I'm glad. I think um I think uh we have a bit of uh I think two questions from uh the audience. Uh, we 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 actually asked on Instagram story and I think we got two about two two questions from the audience. So I think one of the first question is uh was it emotionally taxing for you to make these documentaries? Uh, and how do you deal with them? Uh, yeah. Um, when we made Mental, I was okay. But uh, my wife, Kyoko, uh, uh, she produced the film. Kyoko uh, felt really ill. <laughs> and uh, she had to see Dr. Yamamoto <laughs> 
to get consultation. And、um, it was taxing for her.、Um, I think because I was, you know, operating my camera and、uh, I'm always like, I mean, between the patients and me, there was always a camera and a monitor. But Kyoko, she was talking to them directly. And、uh, she also has this tendency that she kind of projects herself to, you know, <laughs> to other people or, or, or different animals or, or even like plants. So she has a tendency,、uh, you know, to kind of to get into, you know, other beings. So, you know, she suffered for a while, like a, a A few years actually, you know, because of that. And、uh, it was really taxing, but not, not for me.、Uh, I was okay.、Um, for Zero, um, uh, I was shooting alone most of the time. And, uh, and uh, it, I, I don't think I had any problems. Yeah. Okay. And、uh, we have another question. So,、uh, so what was the inspiration、uh, in following up Mental with Zero? I guess that was like, I guess maybe the audience may not know the contact, quick contact, so maybe you can、right. share a bit. Yeah. Right. The, why, yeah. why do you feel the need to tell the story again? Yeah. Sure. Dr. Sure. Dr. Yamamoto. Yeah. Yeah. When we shot Mental,、uh, my main concern was、uh, patients. I was only interested in, in, the, in the world of patients, not the doctors. And uh, to me, uh, I was not interested in Dr. Yamamoto. At all at first. But then gradually I realized that、uh, Dr. Yamamoto is such a such a great doctor. <laughs>、um, you know, he looks so sleepy, <laughs> but、uh, he, his, his words, his, his, what he does is really effective and、uh, calculated. And, and、uh, I noticed that. While observing his, his、uh, consultations and uh, uh, behaviors. And, uh, uh, and also, I learned that he, he is one of the pioneers、uh, in the 1960s that he opened up, you know, the, I mean, unlocked the doors of mental hospitals. You know, it used to be like, you know, all the mental hospital.、Uh, Doors were locked from outside so that patients couldn't get out of the room with their own free, free wills. And、uh, he, he's a pioneer. He unlocked the doors you know, together with patients and、uh, mental health、uh, workers. So I got interested in him. And Kyoko and I often talked about. We have to make a follow up, like we have to make a sequel to Mental. But then 10 years passed and、uh, without doing that. And、um, one day,、um, uh, one of the patients who were in Mental,、um, um, you know, she, she lost her, her child, you know,、um, she, she, she had a confession during the Mental.、Uh, she, She gave me a message、uh, in 2018, in February. She said, Dr. Yamamoto is retiring next month. Did you know that? You have to make another documentary. <laughs> And、uh, I was like, Really? <laughs> And、uh, oh, this would be the, probably the last chance to make a documentary on him. So we quickly moved to, to get a permission from Dr. Yamamoto and Yoshiko san. And、uh, we started shooting right away. So that's how we shot Zero. Yeah, I think yeah, it's by these chance encounters that yeah, your projects, <laughs> yeah, you said like you move on from ideas and ideas. like, It、right. kind of links, yeah. Right. And I'm just, right, right. just curious、uh, do you still plan to make another sequel with them? Yeah. That's possible. Yeah.、Um, 
I don't have a plan now, but、uh, it's totally possible. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, I guess.、Uh, so what 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 are your your take takeaways from?、Right? I guess over the ten years, what what are the new insights or what are the new things that you felt like you 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 discovered like through this process of making films? Anything anything that、uh, that you like to share with us? Yeah.、Um... Um. Yeah, the responsibility of a filmmaker. It I I feel heavier and heavier <laughs> over ten years. Um,、mm. when I shot Mento, I was novice. I was really young, and I didn't really know. I mean, I didn't really think about um what kind of responsibility you know I'm burdened by making this documentary. Which, you know, when where I aim my camera to the real, real personal stories, like a real, you know, really like something that people wouldn't share with the public. So,、um, in a sense, you know,、uh, I need to be responsible for the rest of their lives. You know, <laughs> yeah, and that's something you know I didn't. Really realize when I shot it,、um, but now you know I, I fully realize, I fully understand, and、uh, um, yeah, that's something I. Any、really yeah. any incident that made you realize the importance, of, the responsibility that you have? Any specific incidents? <laughs> yeah. You... Well, yes, yes. For example, a few years ago,、um, uh, the mother I I was talking about. Uh, she became very, very nervous.、Um, it was like, it was like, it ten years after Mental was released. You know, she became very, very、uh, nervous about、um, people watching Mental.、Uh, you know, it was already DVDs were already released. You know, it was also. On on you know streaming services and so it's everywhere. But she became all of a sudden you know very very un, you know anxious about about that because her her daughter was、uh, in love with.、Uh, I mean she 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 was now an adult you know young adult and she she was in love with somebody and、uh, she was thinking about getting getting married and.、Uh, The mother was really kind of concerned about、uh, what kind of effects, you know, the film would 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 give to to daughter's daughter's marriage or daughter's relationship. And、uh, fortunately, you know, it didn't really give any negative effects,、yes. so she's okay now. But you know, even after. Ten years, you know, of release, you know, still, you know, people who are in the film are still alive and you know, really doing whatever they are doing. So, um, uh, I cannot say that. <laughs> yeah, it's a <laughs> lifelong be... responsibility.、Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. So I think to 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 close off this Q and A, I think you've been really great. Uh. If you're sharing and all, and I think, uh, I think what I think one one last question is, uh, what what is it that uh you're currently up to, and uh, yeah, any projects upcoming, and uh, and I think to end off, uh, what is it that you like to give to the audience, say to the audience, and maybe to aspiring documentary filmmakers as well. Yeah, I'm making.、Uh, I'm editing two films right now. Uh, one is something I shot in Michigan in in the United States. It's a film about a person who was in in prison for fifty years, but he was coming out of prison for the first time, and、uh, we had a chance to to follow him from the moment he was released from the prison, and that's、uh, one one project I'm editing. The other one is, you know, I, I've been shooting films in in around here, like a, it's a really local community. 
Um, it's about cats. Um, oh. and <laughs> again, <laughs> yeah, I, I love to be okay. The shots of your cats in the documentaries, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that'll be very interesting. I'll be really interested. Yeah, excited to watch that. Both of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. Any any uh message that you would like to share with the audience? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. Whether you have your camera or not, you know, try watching carefully, you know, try look and listen carefully and attentively. For example, even like, uh, even, even the street you walk every day. I suggest, why don't you look at the street like really closely like ah what is this tree what kind of uh, tree is it <laughs> you know, like, yeah. the tree you you see every day but you you re you pay attention like you know um um in a renewal renew yeah. your attention like and uh, then you know your the world looks really different and um that's something I try to do with 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 my films, but you don't even need a film to do that like every day. And uh, I think that's something really needed these days because you know we we judge, I mean we don't look and listen carefully and we just easily judge, you know, with a really um without thinking. And uh, especially in this, you know, social media uh situation, you know, um uh, we are so quick. We are so busy. Our mind is so busy. So why don't we just take our time, take a deep breath, and uh, look and listen, and uh, you you find out a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Soda, and sure. all the best with your projects. Yeah. Thank you. Yo, keep in touch. Take care. Yeah. Take care. Thank you.